Between 130 and 150 million people globally have chronic hepatitis C infections. A significant number of those who are chronically infected will develop liver cirrhosis or liver cancer. About 350,000 to 500,000 people die each year from hepatitis C related liver diseases. The hepatitis C virus is a blood-borne virus and so the main mode of transmission is through blood, most often due to unsafe injection practices. In this video we will look at the current knowledge of the hepatitis C virus life cycle in the liver cells of humans. We begin this journey with the hepatitis C virus itself that enters the extracellular matrix of the liver. Let's first, uh, let's first look at the virus structure. So here we have the viral envelope, which is made up of a lipid bilayer, just like human cells. On the envelope, we have surface proteins, which we won't go into detail on, uh, on the names. Then within the envelope, there is a protein capsule that protects the genetic material of the virus. This protein capsule is called the capsid. Well, in this case, it's called a nucleocapsid because it pro uh, protects the uh, nucleotides. Now, the capsid is protecting the nucleotides, the genetic material, which is a positive uh, single-stranded RNA or positive sense uh, RNA. We'll di discuss why it is called positive later on. So it has been shown that the hepatitis C virus has the help of lipoproteins to enter the hepatocytes, the liver cells, because lipoproteins are usually recognized by the liver. So here are the um, hepatic cells, the hepatocytes, which are attached to each other by tight junctions. In between the hepatocytes, we have bile ducts, where bile flows through. Bile leaves the liver and is stored in the gallbladder. Within the hepatocytes, we have the nucleus. Well, each hepatocyte has a nucleus where the genetic material of the cell is, uh, is stored, is kept. Surrounding the nucleus is the endoplasmic reticulum. In particular, this is known as the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum houses many ribosomes that main function is to synthesize proteins from messenger RNA. Okay, now that we know the cell that the hepatitis C virus will invade, let's see how the virus invades the hep hepatocyte and how the virus, the hepatitis C virus, replicates within the hepatocyte. So let's go back to the hepatitis C virus, which is, which is bound to the lipoprotein. The lipoprotein and the hepati hep hepatitis C virus will bind onto specific receptors on the liver cell. This process is called uh, attachment, which will lead to viral entry into the cell. The liver cell will endocytize the hepatitis C virus, leading to viral entry. An endosome will form that will contain the hepatitis C virus. Next, the viral envelope, the virus's uh, lipid membrane, will fuse with the endosome, a process known as fusion. This will result in the release of the nucleocapsid into the cytoplasm of the liver cell. The nucleocapsid will then uncoat, releasing the hepatitis C virus genetic material, which is the positive single-stranded RNA or positive sense RNA. So what will happen to this viral single-stranded RNA? Well, it will actually use the host's ribosomes, which are around the endoplasmic reticulum, to make its own proteins. The virus, the hepatitis C virus, will use the host's machinery, the ribosomes, the amino acids, 
to make their own proteins. This process is known as translation. Let's take a closer look at what is being made. So here we have the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. Here is the endoplasmic reticulum lumen, and here is the cytoplasm, the cytosol of the cell. And in this small box, we are looking at the translation of the hepatitis C virus single-stranded RNA uh, into polyproteins, into many proteins. In order for the hepatitis C virus to make its proteins, they use the host ribosomes here. And here is the positive uh, single-stranded RNA, which will be translated by the ribosomes to make many proteins, polyproteins. These proteins will, for, will fold and arrange themselves to form many things for the hepatitis C virus. But these protein structures that will form can be divided into two main categories. The proteins will be either structural proteins for hepatitis C virus or non-structural proteins for the hepatitis C virus. Structural proteins means that these proteins will be used to form the structure of the hepatitis C virus, such as the capsid or the surface proteins. However, the non-structural proteins will form uh, the replication complex in this case. So let's focus on what this replication complex is. So here in the different box, we have again the endoplasmic reticular membrane and there is the endoplasmic reticulum lumen, and here is the cytosol of the cell. Here are the non-structural proteins that will assemble to become the replication complex for the hepatitis C virus, not the hepatitis B virus, as I, as I written. So what the replication complex does in simple terms, or what will happen, is that the hepatitis C virus positive single-stranded RNA will be replicated by the replication complex to a negative single-stranded RNA. This negative single-stranded RNA will then be used as a template by the replication complex, again, to form many single-stranded RNA positives. So from this negative single-stranded RNA, the replication complex will produce many positive single-stranded RNA. So now looking at a big picture, here we have the replication complex forming. It will use the negative single-stranded RNA to produce many positive single-stranded RNA. So we have many here. So again, what is what happens is the assembly of the replication complex, which then will replicate the viral RNA. After these positive single-stranded RNAs are formed, are produced, what will happen is that viral particle assembly will take place. This will occur firstly in the endoplasmic reticulum. The process actually require, requires the help of a lipid droplet. So let's just take a closer look at what, and at what is happening. So here we have the endoplasmic reticulum, the lumen, and the cytosol. Here is the lipid droplet. And the lipid droplet will essentially help form the, vi the hepatitis C viral particle by bringing in the structural proteins, if you remember, the surface proteins and the capsid. And these structural proteins were already produced uh, from translation, if you remember. So in this box, what we are seeing is hepatitis C, not hepatitis B, but hepatitis C virus core trafficking and capsid formation. The positive single-stranded RNA is also directed into this viral particle that is being formed. From here, the hepatitis C viral particle will be transported to the Golgi apparatus, where it, will, where it will be packaged up. 
So here we have the Golgi viral assembly. So the viral particle has already been formed. We have the uh, surface membrane, um, surface proteins on the lipid membrane, the envelope. And then we have the nucleocapsid, which uh, contains the genetic material of the hepatitis C virus, which is a single-stranded RNA positive strand. So the hepatitis C virus particle is packaged up from the ER to the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus will then uh, uh, package it up and uh, put it in an endosome, which then will be released into uh, the extracellular matrix. What I actually did not show is that the Golgi apparatus, while it's when it's packaging up the hepatitis C virus, it will also uh, include a lipoprotein with it. And the lipoprotein will help the hepatitis C virus invade other hepatocytes. Finally, the hepatitis C virus, when it's packaged up, it can actually infect uh, adjacent um, hepatic cells through a cell-to-cell -cell transmission. And it's quite simple because the, the hepatocytes are tightly packed together, allowing the hepatitis C virus to infiltrate and invade adjacent cells more easily. More easily.